Oh, I think we are now live. It is Wednesday night at seven o'clock central. And one of the Cougar legends is with me tonight. Number 42, Doug Jones. How are you doing tonight, buddy? Doing good, Bernard. Yeah, how about you, man? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm so glad that we finally have have gotten together and that we're going to do this tonight. It's going to be a fun conversation. And for those of you who weren't part of the program back in the day, for those of you who weren't old enough to witness the thunder and lightning of Woo Woo Parker and Doug Jones, yeah. you guys missed, you missed it. You just, you did. These guys on the heels of Dwight Jones and all of his accomplishments came Doug and Woo Woo, and it was like thunder and lightning, and I don't want to leave out Philip Braswell. The three of them made such an amazing wishbone attack and backfield, but we're going to get into all of that tonight. Doug, thank you for making some time tonight. I really, really appreciate you being spend some time with us. Okay, yeah, I'm glad to do it, man. I have uh... I made some contact with some of the old classmates through this program, man. So it's it's a good thing, you know, as far as I'm concerned, what you're doing, you know. Well, I appreciate the kind words, but I, I promise you, I have as much fun talking to, to old cougars that do cougars and, and everybody okay. just every week. It's so much fun just telling the oral history of our program. But Doug, before we get into yours, Man, we got all kind of folks you're going to recognize on the call already. Okay. Charles, Charles Kelly Bronson. Yeah. Bishop, That's my Facebook buddy. <laughs> Bishop, What's Thark, up, John? Bishop Thark White. What's up? What's up, Reggie? Mac, uh, Mickey Saffold. And my brother, Nick. <laughs> LaRue Freeman. What's up, LaRue? And one of your backfield mates, number 31, Philip Braswell. Philip Braswell. Man, I tell you, Philip, man, Philip was awesome, man. He was a lot of fun in the backfield with, with Philip, man. He was tough, too, man. <laughs> well, Doug, let's, let's kick it way, way back. What, what community, what part of Dothan did you grow up in during your elementary and middle school, junior high times? Okay, I, I came up. On uh, Acid Plant Hill, that's Adam Street, Murdershaw Street, mm -hmm. and uh, I play with the uh, Stringer Street Bulldogs as far as my Pee Wee League. Mm -hmm. You know, we would win city champ every year, mm -hmm. every year with the Bulldogs, Coach Johnny Porter and Coach Frank Flowers. And so that's pretty much where I got my start with football, you know. Did you play yeah. other sports as a kid or just football? Yeah, I did it all, man. We played uh, baseball, track, basketball, mm -hmm. you know, all over at Lincoln Community Center. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was about it. I missed out on the middle school mm -hmm. programs. I, I was at Northview during my middle school years. Um, well, during your, your elementary years, who were some of your buddies in the neighborhood? Who did you play ball with and go to school with who later – went on to Northview with you. Okay, uh, I don't remember if Wolves with the Bulldogs, he may have been, I'm not sure. But I know Tim Whaley, Pye, mm -hmm. and um, Leo Butler, uh, Jerry Taylor. Jerry Taylor played basketball for Northview after he got there. So that was pretty much that I can recall right now. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Now, you said you came over to Northview during your middle school years. It was when did you start playing sports at Northview? I started playing sports at Northview in the seventh grade. I want, I want to make sure that folks who are listening who didn't know your past, I want you to repeat what you just said. I started playing uh, North, at Northview in the seventh grade on the ninth grade squad. And where were you in school in seventh grade? I was in school at Beverly Middle School, you know, and uh, all right, Doug, you gotta come over. You gotta tell that story. How does a seventh grader end up playing in ninth grade football? 
I have no idea. I think that was something Coach Parrish pulled off. Him and my mother behind my back. And uh, he would come over every day and uh, pick me up during sixth period, you know, to uh, get me over to the school. Him and uh, Coach Kellum worked something out where I could leave during sixth period and go to Northview. So in, in seventh and eighth grade, you didn't play sports for Beverly. You played sports for Northview. Yes. Yes, I played on the football squad. Had you already hit your growth spurt by then? How big were you in seventh, eighth grade? My height was there. My height was there. I was probably around 200, maybe, in the seventh grade, you know. Because hmm. I ended up probably about 225 as a senior. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And how tall were you? I was six feet. Mm -hmm. And what what uh, what positions were they playing you in seventh and eighth grade at? Well, during your seventh and eighth grade years, but at Northview ninth grade. Okay, uh, I think when I first got there, Coach Trip tried me at defensive line, mm -hmm. offensive line. I just wasn't comfortable being down there in, the, in them crunch, crunches like that, you know. And wanted to stand up, so you know, I finally they finally moved me to. Uh, linebacker, defensive end, him and Coach Mack Kirkland. Did you have, Doug, were there were there jealousies with your seventh and eighth grade friends that you were coming over, or was everybody, for the most part, supporting and just thinking that was pretty cool, you getting to come over and play at Northview for the ninth grade team? Yeah, for the most part, man, everybody thought it was pretty cool. You know, they made a bigger deal out of it than I did, you know. So it, it was a good experience, you know. Oh, and sure. I, I, I tell you, Bernard, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I got a grandson in Nashville. Uh -huh. They're trying to do the same thing with him, man. And I told my daughter to slow it down, you know, let him play with his age group, you know. <laughs> you know, that's it's so, it's so wise. Oh, we got a new couple more folks, Doug, have rolled in to say, give a shout out to you. Okay. When I say Barnadell is in the house, who, who am I speaking of? Barnadell? Barnadell. I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that how one. About, how about one of your teammates, younger brothers, one of my teammates, Patrick Fitch? Says oh, to yeah. Hello. Patrick Fitch. Yeah, man. Ahmed's brother. I, I ran into Ahmed at uh, Mickey's wife's funeral, man. And that was the first time I had seen him since high school, man. Wow, that's amazing. Now, Mickey's yeah. younger brother, again, one of my teammates, Mark Seifold, says to tell big brother Doug hello. That's right. Hello, Mark. You know, I hate I missed out on Mark's playing days. I heard he was pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> he was tough. He's always tough. Charles Bronson says, no sports in middle school when you were in seventh, and he was in eighth. Andy Summerford played on the Northview ninth grade team when he was in eighth grade. So okay. maybe there was a few folks coming over to play. Yes. But that's having, having the high school coach pick you up in seventh and eighth grade. That was probably, that was pretty cool for you. It was, it was, I was kind of nervous. You know, that was my uh, first time meeting Coach Ferris, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, he was extremely nice, man. He was extremely nice all the way through high school. And uh, still to this day, if I need Coach Parrish, I can pick up the phone and give him a call, you know. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And speaking yes. of another blast from the past, Kim Wise says to tell you hello. Hello, Kim. One of the best cheerleaders at The View. That's right. Well, Doug, <laughs> let's, let's talk a little bit about you go seventh and eighth grade at Beverly, and then you come over to Northview and you're you're finally a ninth grader, but you've yes. been playing for the ninth grade for a while. Did you play ninth grade ball for a third season or did they move you up to JV? No, or when I was uh, when I became a ninth grader, Coach Parrish moved me up to the Foster. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I started at fullback. And, and who played else, with a with who some else great in your backfield? In that backfield, it was uh uh, Steve Entz, Doug's brother, and uh, Reginald Jones, and I was at fullback. Mm. And uh, Mike a, Dirk was the quarterback. That's a talented backfield right there, oh, but it gets yeah. even better. 
it gets even better. We're going to come to that. You got Doug. Jackie Miller says, what's up, DJ? Hello, Jackie. That's my favorite chili. <laughs> John David Edwards says, Joe, man, you got to, they're all coming out for you tonight, Doug. That's awesome. Hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> well, Doug, what, let's talk about your transition from trying you out at different spots, defensive line, offensive line, maybe defensive end, but when did you finally settle in the backfield? Uh, it was my freshman season, my freshman year. You know, I played a little, uh, I played fullback and a little linebacker mm -hmm. with uh, both of the Patterson brothers. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from uh, Kurt Patterson and uh, his brother. Oh, man, his name is slipping my mind. But it was two Patterson brothers playing linebacker. Mm -hmm. And they put me at middle linebacker with them, and they taught me a lot about the position. I mean, it's that's awesome that the older guys took you in like that. Yes, what yes. about? Let's talk a little bit about Larry Roberts. Talk yes. about playing playing with Larry. What was that like being a teammate? Man, it was awesome. Uh, Larry was great. Does everybody know? Uh, on that defensive line, he really made my job a lot easier. You know, being in front of me and uh, you know just getting in that backfield. All I had to do if it got past Larry. You know, my goal was to be there, you know. Mm -hmm. who, and who was, when you were playing on the defense in ninth grade, who was the, who were the main defensive coaches? I know Coach Hicks, Coach Randy Hicks, and uh, Coach Bubba Johnson, and uh, Coach Roy Griffin. And those guys, they were, they were the backbone of the defense for many, many seasons. Man, with you and some of the best known coaches in Northview history. Doug, let's let's talk about being a high schooler and school spirit. What was it like being a, an athlete at Northview back at that time period? And we're talking, was this the fall of 79 uh, going into 1980? Yes. Yes, in the fall of 80, it was, it was exciting, man. The, uh, you know, the pep rallies were great. You know, and uh, they really, they really treated us well. You know, Coach Parrish and the uh, quarterback club. You know, mm -hmm. enjoyed the movies, uh, the eating. You know, it was great. Now we did a lot as a team, on and off the field. You know, mm -hmm. so it was a close knit group of guys. Well, it. Uh, oh, another one of your. I think one of your teammates, Shane Cobb, has just joined us. Yeah, Shane. What's up, Shane? And Doug D.C. Clark is in the house. Yeah. Okay. Bro, Man, they're all coming out to see you Chad. tonight, Doug. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and of course, guys, I'm talking with DJ Doug Jones, and we're just kind of kind of plodding through a little bit. But I wanna I wanna see if you've got any memories from any either how tough the practices were, or maybe some of your game memories where you had some big plays, or what was it? I mean, coming over as such a young guy, getting into playing high school sports, that's one thing. But you're not just standing on the sidelines hoping to get in. You're playing. Yes. Uh, I guess that came from Adam Street, you know, playing on dirt roads, playing up at the old East Highland mm -hmm. uh, schoolyard, you know, playing tackle without pass, things of that nature. And, uh, you know, just coming in, man, uh, my my motto was, you got to beat me, you know, you got to beat me, you know, and I'm not going to let you beat me, you got to beat me. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I've always looked at playing football, you know. Yes. Well, Doug, did, in the neighborhood, did you have any older athletes who you tried to, to pattern your game after? Or maybe some guys you were seeing in college or pros that you really liked their game and you were trying to, to, to emulate what they were doing? Well, you know, I grew up watching a lot of older guys play. I remember uh, Greg Ramsey uh, playing at Dilton High. That was before Northview. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bill Grant, guys like that from my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Ray Price. You know, those are some of the older guys that I grew up watching mm -hmm. playing football, you know. 
and they was all from our neighborhood, you know. Um, that's pretty much outside of my family. That's pretty much where my start of football started at, you know. Were, were there any colleges or pro teams that you really liked to follow? Yeah, I was a big Lawrence Taylor fan, you oh. know. Yeah, I loved Lawrence Taylor, you know, when I was coming up as a kid. He's still, to me, he's still the greatest defensive uh, pro football player ever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a, what a monster he was. And, guys, if you didn't get to see Doug play live or, or videos, you're missing out. And, and where I wanna, what I want to talk about is getting into your junior year, and then we'll get into your senior year. But I really I want to talk about that special bond that you and Wu had Jonathan Parker in the backfield because it truly was a special pairing. You guys really were, were thunder and lightning. And frankly, a little bit of that was interchangeable because you had the speed as well as the power. And, and so did so did Wu. But talk a little bit about running that offense and what was it like in the huddle with him? Oh man, it was uh it was great, man. Uh who was a great ball player, man, and he grew up pretty much in the same neighborhood that I did, mm -hmm. across from Northview. You know, he was fast and tough, man, and it was it was just a lot of fun, man. And, you know, blocking for him or him blocking for me or whatever, you know, it was it was a lot of fun man. with uh old Dickie Little. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, that's another guy I wish you could have spoke to, but you know, I understand, you know. Sure, sure. Uh, speaking of the, the, the memory of Northview and its, and its history, Shirley C. has just joined us and says to tell you hello. Hello, Miss C. How you doing? <laughs> well, Doug, it, it's, did you know Wu before coming to high school? Did you guys compete against each other and, and growing up or just knew each other from the neighborhood? No, we, I think, moved, moved down. Mm -hmm from Cleveland, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And I know we went to Beverly together, you know. I knew him then riding the bus back and forth, you know. But uh, we didn't play together until we got to Northview. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's talk a little bit about Philip Braswell, probably the toughest, the toughest blocker of that yes. era, maybe of all time, a special athlete himself. What was it like having Philip in the backfield with you guys? Man, it was fun. It was fun, man. Philip was a tough guy, man. Like you said, he was fast, you know, and didn't have no fear in him, you know. <laughs> and he kept bloodshot, bloodshot red eyes. You know, it, it was just a lot of fun, man. Me, him, and uh, I think he played also in that wishbone offense a little bit with uh, Reggie and myself, you know. Well, Doug, which, which was more difficult to you, the practices that the coaches ran or the games that you guys played in? Definitely the practices, man. You know, I was up at uh, up at Dothan High, the old Northview, mm -hmm. not long ago, man, and they was just drinking water freely. And I was like, damn, we had to earn water breaks when I played. You know, so well, yes, it's, yes. it's a big difference in the way uh, sports science has come along. I can remember when the coaches hooked up those PVC pipes and the water would flow out of the holes. And we thought that was the greatest thing because you're right. They never would give you water breaks ever. No, you had their own water breaks, man. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. Do you remember the drills, the Oklahoma drill or the man in the middle drill or those things? Yes, I remember those. I uh, didn't get, a, get to do it too much. I did a little bit. But whenever I did it, I always tried to challenge the best guy on the team. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it was a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun back in those days, you know. Well, Doug, what was the most fun for you about playing high school sports? What was because I know you played some basketball as as well. But what was yes. the most fun for you? Uh, the football was the most fun, man. Uh, we had we had great coaches. You know, they did outstanding jobs. I'm not just saying that because I'm on the page, but uh, 
you know, I think about it pretty regular, man. Coach Parrish probably should have won at least four championships at Northview. And I blame that on the coaching itself because that 81 season, it was almost perfect, man. They they put together a perfect plan. That was the uh, the first year we started the uh, team goals on paper and the individual goals on paper. I don't know if you all had the chance to do that, mm -hmm. but I'm just about willing to bet on that 81 season team, just about every player on that team put down win a state championship as a team goal. You know, that was one of the best seasons, man. And I felt like we could have won it my freshman season, but we didn't have that that same routine or mm -hmm. going on that year as we did my sophomore year. Well, Doug, that I'm looking, was your freshman year 79? It was, I want to say 80. I'm not sure. 80. Right. I graduated in 84, so I didn't actually play the 84 season. All right. Let's see here. In 80, the team went 7-3 and three and lost yes. to Durfin High at the end of the year. Yes, yes. So and then 81, of course, was the state title year. 82 was a 7-3 and three season. Yes. And then 83 was a six and five season. Yes, yes. That was a hard season, man. That, season, that, yes. was, that was a hard season. Doug, talk a little bit about, there, there's a few things I want to, you grew up, I guess, watching all of the older kids in the neighborhood, maybe even your, your brother or others, play at Dothan High. And Northview didn't come into being until you were in middle school. Did you yes. want to go to Dothan High, or were you starting to get excited about coming to, to Northview? Well, I was zoned for Northview, you mm -hmm. know, and I was around the program, you know, even when I wasn't playing. I, I used to go up and just stand on the sidelines and watch watch them practice. And uh, at night, uh, Coach Kirkland would unlock the gym and let me come in and watch them practice basketball, you know, things like that, man. So, so I, I got involved with Northview when they first opened the school, you know, as a spectator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they were smart to, to bring you into the fold as early as they did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They saw something special. And speaking of something special, Coach Randy Hicks says to tell you hello. Hello, Coach Hicks. Coach Randy Hicks. He was tough, man. Coach Hicks was tough on us. <laughs> he was tough, but he was fair. He was tough and fair. Now, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's talk a little bit, Doug, about the sport of football. Why did you enjoy the sport of football as much as you did? What was it about the sport and playing? I think for me, man, it's just growing up watching it. You know, I was big Dolphin fans. I liked it. Larry uncle, mm -hmm. Mercury Morris, guys like that. You know, just growing up watching it, man, and uh, just playing, playing in the neighborhood, you know, and I enjoyed the contact, you know, with the uh, made the best man win type of attitude, you know. It was the competitor is what I'm hearing. Yes. It brought yes. out that competitive drive. It and did. The, it did. The, the will or the desire to win is what yes. it sounds like. And that's what I, I always knew you for. Even though I'm a couple of years younger, I certainly knew of you and Leo and Woo Woo and and playing in the backfield. That's I would that's who I would watch. And you guys, just seeing you guys around campus, it was just man, I was just in awe of you guys being a much younger guy. But speaking of another Cougar legend, we got Mike Henry, Coach Mike Henry in the house. Yeah, Coach yeah. Mike Henry. What's up, Mike? Number 13. Hey, Mike, good to see you. Oh, oh, we got it. They're rolling in for you, Doug. Coach Jerry Andrews. Yeah, that's my running back coach. Yeah. Calls you the best fullback in Northview history. How about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was the good old days, man. <laughs> well, Doug, let's, let's take it to that 81 season. You got David Alford under center. 
you yes. and Wu and 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 and, and Philip in the backfield, and not just me, but many people regard your state championship team, that eighty-one team, as being the best in the history of Northview. Y'all were thirteen and one. You were barely scored upon. You didn't have a lot of the the ups and downs emotions that we did in my year. But I want to talk about that spring and leading into the season. Did you guys have any idea you'd be that good? Well, you know, I, like I said, man, I, I think our coaches, they could write a book on how to win a state championship in high school from that season alone, man. They put the perfect plan together, you know, and uh, we was a close-knit bunch of guys. We practiced hard. We played hard. We did everything together as a team, you know. And during the tour days, we wouldn't go home. We would go to one of the teammates' home and swim all day. <laughs> or, you know, and Coach Johnson would take us out to eat pizza on certain nights, you know. It, it was just a close-knit bunch of guys, you know. And uh, the weight room was uh, readily open during the summer, you know. Uh, Mickey Saffold and I, we, we would lock the gym up at night. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach Parrish would leave it open for us, you know. So you we, just, we just worked hard, man. <laughs> you hear me? You, you guys were gym rats. You just hung around and That's right. did your thing. <laughs> That's right. And uh, Coach, Griffin, got... man, Coach, Coach Griffin was tough. It's, it's, it's only been one time since I played that I regret having contact with a guy. And that was with Mickey Saffo. For some reason, Coach Griffin was trying him out at defensive back. And I was at running back. And this day at practice, Coach, you know, they did a quick pitch with me running the end. They stopped practice. And it was just one-on-one -on -one between me and Mickey. And the whole time I was like, man, I don't want to do this. You know, that's my friend. I don't want to do this. But neither one of us gave up, you know. And that lick was awesome. Mm -hmm. And on the way back to the huddle, all I heard was Coach Griffin say, run it back, Coach, run it back. <laughs> so he made us do it twice, man. Mm -hmm. And I told Mickey about that not too long ago, the regret that I had on that lick, you know. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there was mutual respect between the two good yes. friends, but it's right. it's athletics, and you guys were competing, and you were called upon to do what you did. That's right. Doug, That's right. we got another buddy of yours, Lorenzo Thomas, says to tell you hello. Hello. What's up, Lorenzo? I saw him not too long ago. Yeah. Well, guys, this is this. We're just talking with with DJ Doug Jones, and we're. We're in that 1981 time period, that season, the magical season. Yes. And Doug, what? <laughs> Norfew had never played in a big stadium, a big uh, artificial turf like Legion Field. What was that like? Do you remember what it was like first stepping on the turf that Tuesday practice? Yes, it was exciting, man. It was, it was great, man, and. Um, you know, like I said, the coaches did a great job that year. You know, I can't, I can't take away from that at all. You know, I didn't notice it back then, but as I've gotten over and looked back upon it, I realized how good a job they did in preparing us for that season. You know, and you know, one of the beautiful things about this coaching staff, you and I both had the same set of coaches for the most part. It wasn't just preparing you for athletics and football yes. and the next game. What what life lessons, what lessons about being a man did you gather from your different coaches from North? Uh, just just how to how to be, you know, how to present yourself, how to carry yourself, you know, and uh, just being uh being a good teammate, you know. I carried that out you know, through our life, man, you know. I, even in my work field, you know, when I was in the Navy, you know, being a good shipmate, uh, being a great coworker, you know, and even to now where I'm at now, being a great father, you know, 
teaching my children from my own mistakes, making sure they don't make the same mistakes I've made, loving my wife, you know, and providing for my, for my family, you know, all those things, man, mm -hmm. you know, play a part in my upbringing and my learning as a young kid, as a teenager, you know. Well, that's what I was going to wow. say. You know, Doug, it's, it's when we grow up and if we have a little bit of more athletic talent than some of our classmates and teammates, we get recognized for those things. Yes, yes. Put, and it puts you in the spotlight, good or bad. But it does. one of the difficult things for high school kids is how do you take whatever level of maturity you've reached to be able to handle all of that? That's some, right. That's some, right. some kids handle it great, some not so great. And as we all go through, we all make mistakes, and that's not that's right. uh, we, we learn from those things. That's right. And 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 hearing what you just said about being such a good father and husband and dedicated to your craft, that's the kind of things that our coaches help to instill. And that's what I so appreciate about coaches parish, trip. Yes. John, I mean, all of those guys, and I know you feel the same way about the way you were treated by those coaches. Oh, yeah, I do. I do, man. And, uh, you know, it's hard for me to ask for anything, man. I, I don't know. I've always been like that, but I know if I really needed Coach Parrish or probably any of the coaches, man, I could probably pick up that phone and give them a call. And if they can help me, I'm pretty sure they will. And, and even to today, no doubt about that. E even today, almost 40 years after you're out of high school, they're still there for you. Isn't that amazing by that, those guys? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, man. And, you know, it, it's great, man. It's great. Well, Doug, let's talk a little bit about the state championship game. Okay. Do you have any specific memories or, or remembrances about that, about the game? Uh, yes. I do. I I remember it was a it was a tight game, man. It was a good game. We we played the best in the state that year, you know. And uh, I got I can't talk about that state championship game without mentioning our secondary man. They they was four of the best, man. I think you know. And that season, man, most of the quarterbacks that we played against, like Patrick Washington, I remember him. I think he went to Auburn. Mm -hmm. Man, those guys used to throw that ball, man. And our defensive backs were great that whole season, man. And I, I think Bud Young mentioned that we wouldn't have won it without them. And I, I think I, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I love hearing those stories. And, and I've got some <coughs> highlights that I'm going to be able to share on our, our page for the 81 state game. Uh, pretty okay. soon. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to sharing that and, and seeing those memories again. Yes, yes. And, and Doug, your, your state championship game was such a nail biter. Until that ball was batted down in the end zone, it could have yes. been either team's game. That's right. That's right. And, uh, you know, it, it was a great game, man. It was a nice, close game. And, uh, a lot of people came up from Dothan. You know, we got the uh, police they scored on the way back in. It was it was great, man. We we had a good time, man. And was that your sophomore year? That was my sophomore year. And uh, as far as my knowledge goes, that was the first state championship in the city of Dothan. You know, I think you're I think you're right. I know Dothan High lost two championship games in the seventies. Okay. And so our your your team and my team were the first two by the big public schools in the city of Dothan. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I miss you guys, man. I, I heard a lot about y'all, you know, Lawrence Dawsey and uh, uh what's the guy's name? Uh, got the restaurant here in Dothan. David Tom Hogan. Tom. David Tom, 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 yeah, Tommy Hogan. Yeah. Yeah, I heard a lot about you guys when I was in the Navy. And I got that announcement when I was the on board ship that you all had won the state championship. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to, to, to the Navy in just a minute, but talk to us a little bit about you being recruited to play college football. 
because I know you had a lot of interest of you starting early on. I did, I did. I received my first questionnaire from uh, Paul Bear Bryant in the ninth grade. And uh, I think just about everybody in the SCC and the ACC mm -hmm. and the HBCUs was sending questionnaires to me, you know. And how I ended up going to Tennessee, the whole time I was going through this process, I was trying to get my mother to tell me which school to pick. And every time she would say, it's your decision. And what happened with Tennessee Cutcliffe called the whole family into the living room. And he showed us a film of University of Tennessee. And after the film, my mother said, I liked it there. And that was, that was, that sealed the deal right there for me. Then. <laughs> now, did you take official recruiting visits to Tennessee and other schools? Yes, I did. I did. I went to Tennessee, Alabama, Auburn, uh, Florida State, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Southern Miss. And I think that's about it. Um, Maryland had a brother teaching at the University of Maryland during that time. So, and they recruited me heavily as well. Wow. Well, but I didn't visit Maryland, you know. I'm, I'm sure that wasn't an easy decision for you. And who was the head coach? Was it, was it Johnny Majors at the time? Yes, it was Johnny Majors, the head coach. Mm -hmm. And he was a, a, a legend in his own right. Absolutely. Yes, he was. He was. He was a legend, man. And, uh, in his own time, like you said, he was. And what position were they wanting you to play when you got up to Tennessee? But they recruited me as a linebacker. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the position I was, you know, being trained to play. Doug, I can remember as a ninth or 10th grader seeing you, I, don't, I think it must have been at Rip Hughes pregame. I can't remember where, the, where it was. Okay. You had on the brightest orange uh, sweatshirt and sweatpants combination I had ever seen. Oh, is that right? <laughs> and I just knew that meant where you were going to school. I think you had already made up your, your decision okay. uh, and, and probably even signed by then. I can't remember where I saw you. I just remember seeing, man, that's the brightest orange sweatsuit I have ever seen. And it was you in it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll tell you, man, it was it was a hard decision. I didn't know where I wanted to go. Uh, mm -hmm. Coach Paris told me at the last minute, he was like, man, you got to make a decision, you know. And uh, it, it was a hard decision. I I grew up wanting to play for uh, Coach Eddie Robinson. Mm -hmm. And at the last, I hadn't received anything from them. And at the last minute, Coach Paris uh, reached out to them. And they got in contact with me. And like most of the uh, HBCUs back then, they didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so they was asking me, you remember Tracy? I don't know if you remember Tracy Austin or not. One of my classmates, her father graduated from Grambling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I knew him. And they was trying to get me to ask him to bring me there mm -hmm. on, a, on a visit. You know, but I knew him, but I didn't have that type of relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And I just never did ask him to do it, you know. Well, it's uh, it's you never know what windows or doors open and close. But you ultimately you made your way to Tennessee and you were there for a year. Yes. And then and then you ended up leaving school. So uh -huh. take us on the journey that got you to the Navy in your career that you had. Well, my. High school sweetheart was pregnant with my oldest daughter. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I tell you, when I, I was at Tennessee, I got sidetracked a little bit. And I was running with seniors as a freshman when I should have been running with my freshman class. You know, to be honest, I'm going to put it on the line. I know a lot of people wondering about it. And uh, I was doing things that I shouldn't have been doing, you know. And I got kind of frustrated with the red shirt because I felt like I should have been able to play when I got there because they were playing guys that I actually knew that I was better than at 
my position, you know. And mm -hmm. while they read sure to me, only thing I could come up with was because I didn't know the system, you know, at the time. So I left school. I had a chance to go to a junior college, but I, I opted out. And um, when I came home, Mary Susan and joined the Navy, you know, to uh, provide for my family and to be just become my own man. You know? and how long have you and Susan now been together? We've been married for 35 years. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That is so, so awesome. It's and still going strong, my best friend, man. <laughs> that's the best. That is the you best. Can. Shout out can. to Susan. <laughs> well, Doug, we got a few more minutes, but I want to talk about your Navy career. How okay. Long were, how long were you in the Navy and what rank did you achieve? Okay, I was in the Navy. I was in E4 when I got out. Mm -hmm. I was a machinist mate and um, traveled the seven seas, man. I saw a lot of Europe and the uh, Caribbean. And it was just a great experience, man. Uh, you know, when I had to put my life in the hands of uh, other shipmates at time, you know, it, it was a good experience for me, man. Well, that's, and, and I don't know if there's any parallels from playing football and being on a team mm -hmm. with being in the Navy and having to rely on other midshipmen, but there's there's got to be a little bit of parallels there, I would think. It is, it is, it's, especially in the Navy on that ship, man. You live amongst each other, you know, for six months at a time, you know, you out at sea. And uh, you pull into different ports, maybe for a weekend, and uh, you work together. You know, that that's what keeps the ship afloat, mm -hmm. is being part of that team, you know. And when you were discharged, did you go into the civilian world to work, or what, what did you do after the Navy? Uh, yes. You know, when I, when I got out the Navy, I came home. Uh, I don't know if you remember Mr. Jim Rofton. Yeah, he, uh, he used to run Mayflower Trucking Company. Sure. I called him as soon as I got out the Navy, and he told me to come home, that he had a job for me. So I worked with Mayflowers for a little while. And from there, I went to Trojo Corporation mm -hmm. as a machinist operator there. Mm -hmm. And I worked there for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And after I left Trojo, I started driving trucks. So when I drove trucks for about 10 years, did a little bit for Jeff Coleman out there at Coban, sure. but most part was with Central Transport. Mm -hmm. And I did a few years with Adams Beverage here in Delta. Excellent. And what, what keeps you busy these days besides children and, and grandbabies? Uh, pretty much that's about it. I'm, uh, I'm medically retired through the Navy. Um, I bought 25 acres of land about three years ago. So that's keeping me busy. You mentioned Andy Summerford. Yeah. He and I reconnected and he has some cads. I'm trying to get it get with him on. And hopefully that's what that's what's keeping me busy. Those those 25 acres is always something to do out there. Oh, I'm sure that keeps you busy. Now, one or two more questions, DJ, and I sure have enjoyed our conversation and you you okay. share in your journey with us in so many life lessons, just awesome stories. Yeah. How important is it to you for the friendships that you made back in high school, back in those days and maintaining some of those friendships even 40 years later? It's, it's real important, man. I'm, it's, it's always, I'm always happy, you know, whenever I get a chance to run into some of the old guys, you know, or some of the old classmates, you know. And, uh, you know, and I, my, when my daughter first moved to Nashville, my oldest daughter, one of my classmates got in touch with her up there and told her that Miss Carol Baxter, she married Tony Parter. I think she's still going Parter now. Mm -hmm. And she reached out to my daughter, man, and that that just felt real good, you know. Oh, that's... that's Having that oh, wow. relationship and knowing that she had reached out to my daughter, you know. Oh, that's that's great. And Doug, I, I apologize. I meant to ask you as we were talking, I always like to know who your favorite teachers and classes and parts of the school that you really like. You have now you can't say lunch, 
and you can't say break, <laughs> but did you have any favorite teachers or subjects back in the day? What about PE? <laughs> Man, I can't remember. Miss Skipper, Miss Skipper was pretty nice. Uh -huh. And uh, Miss Beardman, she was pretty tough, man. But I got along with pretty much all my teachers, Miss Lowry. Mm -hmm. You know, Miss, I'm thinking about Beverly, not Miss Paul. Everything was good, man, in high school, man. Uh, Reverend Smith, you know, it was good times back then. Oh, how how great was he? Yes. How great was he? Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, him and my father, man, was good, good friends, you know. I lost my father when I was 11 years old, but my father was a minister as well. And him and I remember him and Reverend Smith sitting on the front porch with their legs crossed, you know, as a kid, mm -hmm. talking about the Bible, you know. So, uh -huh. so you know, Reverend Smith meant a lot to me. How 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 wonderful. What about his poems at the end of the pep rallies? How cool were those? Yeah, they were great, man. They were, he got us fired up back then, man. <laughs> he sure did. And Doug, you've gotten a whole bunch of folks in here tonight all fired up to hear from you, to see you. And I want to thank you for spending some time with us tonight. Okay, man. I appreciate it. I enjoyed it, man. And uh, just keep it going, Bernard. I think it's a great thing, man. You well, know, I, you, you're putting us back in contact with each other, man. Well, I sure appreciate those kind words. I got your... Your backfield mate, Philip Braswell, is going to join us next week. I will be there, man. I, I don't think I, I've seen Philip since high school, man. Well, good, good deal. And, and please tell your lovely bride, Susan, hello. Okay. Guys, one of the very best in Northview history, DJ Doug Jones, number 42, with an awesome conversation tonight. So thank you, Doug. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Cool Guys, y'all continue to be safe out there. We're going to keep coming back Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock with all the legendary Cougars, young and old. Thank you again. Y'all have a good night. Thank you, Bernard. Does anybody know how to get in touch with Reginald Jones? Please let me know. I would love to talk with him, man. Reginald Jones. We need to look and find Reginald Jones. Yes, yes. <laughs> good night, guys. All right. Good night. Thank you, man.